Hello and welcome to Cheetah TV. My name is Brian Badger from the Cheetah Conservation Fund. Now on our channel, we try to show you behind the scenes and all the nuts and bolts and the nitty gritty of frontline conservation. Now frontline conservation has to be holistic. It has to look at all of the aspects within the ecosystem. And in today's episode, we're looking at something that may not be um, perceived as being very important, and that is the termite. Now, termites in the in outside of the savannah in the West, in, in the US, in Europe, if you get a, um, a colony of termites underneath your house, then, you know, you've got a problem. And I get that. But on the African savannah, it, it, they, they play an incredibly important role. Now, some species of animal rely on the uh, termites for their diet. Some exclusively feed on the termites. So the termite mounds that you see across the African savanna are nutrition centers for so many species. Things like the aardvark and the aardwolf rely on the termites. Even the most illegally traded animal in the world, the pangolin, relies on termites. Now, there's lots of other species as well, including bat-eared foxes, birds, and other insects actually eat termites as well. So I'm going to take you out onto the African savannah to investigate how the termites live, how they build their mounds, and what role that they do play, you know, both when they're in the mounds and after the mound has been abandoned. Now, if you like the video and you like our channel, please leave us a like and subscribe. You know, it really does help us grow. So without further ado, let me take you out onto the African savannah to discover the fascinating world of termites. All across the Namibian landscape are these big guys. Now this is a termite mound. Now termite mounds can be all different shapes and sizes and it kind of just looks like a pile of earth, but it's so much more than that. Because they're so regular, a lot of people just kind of bypass them and maybe there's an interesting shape here and there. But, uh, but these, the, uh, a, a typical termite colony can be up to a million termites. Now, many people will think that, wow, how can you fit a million termites into this thing? Well, this isn't the dwelling. This isn't where the termites live. They live underground, underneath the mound. So all of this area here, all the way around it, all the, uh, the, 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 the tunnels and the chambers and everything that's underneath, all the earth is taken up and mixed with the uh, saliva uh, and these things are rock hard and they build this. So basically what this is, is an air conditioning system. Because if you can imagine a million termites buzzing around, moving around, cultivating, breeding, raising, uh, incubating eggs, things like that, it generates an incredible amount of heat and that heat needs to come out somewhere. And that's where this bit comes in. This is, is dotted with, with thousands upon thousands of tiny little holes. And inside it's almost like a vortex. And the reason why it's so high, and this one is kind of around about nine feet high. Uh, the reason why it's high is to catch the wind. So depending on the, uh, the terrain, um, that, a lot of the time uh, dictates the size, the shape and the height of the termite mound. So as the wind, if the wind's coming from this direction, it's caught in these tiny holes and it creates a vortex which goes down, cools the air and then another um, set of tunnels come um, and expels the air. And it can keep the, the temperature and the humidity levels. The humidity levels are, are critical uh, to the termite colony. It can keep them constant through 12 months of the year. So whether it's the, the height of summer with soaring temperatures of about 120 Fahrenheit um, or in the winter when it comes down to, you know, mid 30s, it can keep that constant temperature all the time just by this air conditioning system. It's incredible. And not only that, is that you've got worker termites, almost the construction team, that are monitoring the wind direction all the time. And they'll either open up holes 
or they'll clog holes to change the circulation of the air. So when the termites are underneath um, their uh, feeding, they'll, they'll bury uh, wood. Termites kind of staple diet, if you like, is, is, is wood or woody mass, woody matter. Uh, but also um, fungi spores and they, they feed on them and they cultivate them so they can get that kind of balanced diet. And that, that has a hidden reward because a couple of times a year, some of those spores sprout mushrooms. And these mushrooms can be, you know, a, a, a big, like two, two and a half feet, big meaty mushrooms. And they're a prize find if you're out in the bush because they, they, they're absolutely delicious to eat. And it's something that you look forward to after the first set of rains. So just to show you, <laughs> kind of how big this is even when I'm on this it's still over six feet tall and the, the I'll show you a, a few more shapes and sizes just so you can kind of um, get a get a grip of of the diversity even when you're just talking about termites And we, here we have another example. As you can see, this one is a lot shorter, but the principles are exactly the same. Now, the reason why this one is shorter because it's on higher ground than the, the previous one that we saw. So theoretically, this piece here is at the same height um, as far as catching the wind goes. So very similar structure, um, very similar shape, but just a lot shorter. Now, sometimes when you come across a, a termite mound, um, it's not always active. There's not always termites in it because these things, they take, you know, 10, 20 years to build to the really big high ones like we saw before. And they can hang around the landscape for hundreds, if not thousands of years in some circumstances. But when you come across uh, a, uh, a, a, a kind of a, a disused one, an abandoned one, Sometimes they can hide some hidden secrets, so you have to be a bit careful when you approach uh, a, a termite mound that's uh, been inactive for a long time. If you come round to the side that I am, you'll see exactly what I mean. So when you come round to this side, you can see that, uh, well, we know that the termite mound has been abandoned, and if it's abandoned, that means it's not maintained. So after a heavy rain and other circumstances, the central structure, the chambers underneath, they'll start to collapse. And that gives the, the other animals an ideal opportunity to dig it out, to, to burrow uh, down inside. Remember that uh, a maintained um, termite mound is incredibly strong so they'll dig that out and this could be a common hangout place after that event for uh, various snakes some of them very venomous and very dangerous so you always have to approach a termite mound with extreme caution um, but the larger animals things like warthogs will kind of use their tusks and their feet to dig down and then they can put their piglets um, down there and they can re the mother will reverse her way in and then she can look out for potential dangers and protect her youngsters. Um, but other animals such as servals and caracals can kind of bed down in here, uh, especially during the, the summer months when it gets very hot because it's always going to be cooler uh, below ground level. So when you're approaching a termite mound, always give it a wide berth and have a look inside to see if you can see anything. And whatever you do, don't stick your hand down there because inside, um, some of the structure and some of the rocks and some of the, the clumps of earth uh, remain intact and there's lots of hiding places in there. But also with this, with this mound, we can kind of see some of the mechanics of the termite mound. So all of these nooks and crannies and, and the, these, these tunnels and chambers, um, these were, would have been part of not only the entrance system, but also the air conditioning. So all of these will kind of work their way, way up 
into the central spire and that will create the airflow, the vortex going down, keeping the main um, dwelling, the main chambers downside at the correct temperature and the correct humidity. And it makes the termite uh, colony incredibly efficient and successful. So if you see a termite mound, it may look wonderful from one side, but always give it a wide berth. Have a look around it just to make sure that you don't come across something like this with something not so friendly waiting for you. So we've seen the outside of a termite mound, <clears throat> but this is a, a, a cast of, uh, the, of the inside of a very small portion of it. It was done by a, a visiting uh, university that did a very long and in intensive survey <clears throat> about termites. And they found a disused one, an abandoned one, and they poured uh, molten aluminium um, inside it. And that kind of shows us all the different chambers and tunnels and kind of con construction. Now, you would think that it goes this way, but actually it goes up this way. So this would be from the top or from the base of the, of the spire going down. And it kind of looks like a, like either a modern art or very futuristic uh, structure. Um, so each one of these uh, domes is, is like a, a, a small chamber, maybe for laying eggs or storing food. And this goes down, down and down and spreads out um, and makes up the whole colony. So this part here would go up and um, meet the chimney and all the chambers and the, the, remember the vortex that creates all the fresh air coming down and taking the stale air out keeping the hum humidity and the temperature absolutely constant. So it's, it's truly a, a, a feat of engineering. And having said that, uh, modern uh, building designers are actually using um, information like this to make buildings more efficient uh, and more self-sustainable you know, creating airflow passages within the structure of the building. So thanks to these little termites, we're getting a more efficient uh, world that we live in. So when you go across the landscape and you see something that kind of looks kind of ordinary because there's lots of them, give yourself a few minutes, learn a few things about them, and I guarantee there's something fascinating about everything. So to find out more about CCF and our centre here in Namibia or up in Somaliland or around the world, please visit our website at cheetah.org. There you can find ways that you can visit us, that you can help us, that you can sponsor us and how we, you can help us keep the wild truly wild.